This is going to be a study on the subject of fear in the Bible. There are a lot of things people are afraid of that God is not afraid of. So therefore, you shouldn't be afraid of them. Because if you're a born-again Christian, then you have God Almighty living inside of you. So here's some things that people are afraid of that God is getting complete control of. The first one is storms. And in Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. So the Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. Whirlwind, like tornadoes, hurricanes, anything. I remember back in 2016, a huge tornado came through and just tore up parts of my town. The, the store I used to work at when I was younger, it tore up a lot of people's houses. And I remember having to get in the hallway at home and everything else. It was a very fearful time. But then you get to thinking about it and God was in complete control of the storm. And, you know, of course I was praying when that was going on. But I feel like I could have been less fearful and had more trust in God during that time. Because God has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And people are extremely afraid of storms. They're afraid of getting struck by lightning, even though, you know, not very many people get struck by lightning. They're forgetting that God's hand controls the lightning. So people are afraid of storms. People are afraid of heights. But the Lord's not afraid of heights. You know what's going to happen at the rapture? You're going to meet the Lord in the air. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4, we're going to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You know, if, if the Lord was afraid of heights, he's not going to do that. A lot of people have a fear of flying. Psalms 18.10 says, He rode up on a cherub, and did fly. Does you just love verses like that? God rides upon a cherub and flies. Uh, God could fly without a cherub. He's just riding on the cherub for dramatic effect, just because it's cool. So, if you have a fear of flying, why? God doesn't have a fear of flying. A lot of people are afraid of closed-in places. But the Lord's not afraid of closed-in places. In Psalms 40 and verse 2, it says, He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. So, there's no need in being a claustrophobic. If you have to go to the doctor and get an MRI, there's no need to be afraid. What about a fear of snakes? In Job 26, 13, it says, By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. The Lord's obviously not afraid of snakes. He made snakes. He made the devil. Now, I wouldn't advise going and picking up a snake. But still, if you're around a snake, I wouldn't get overly afraid like a lot of people do. The Lord crushes the head of the serpent. Okay, what about public speaking? A lot of people are so afraid of public speaking that... They would rather just die than to speak in public. But the Lord is not afraid of public speaking. In Matthew 5, 1, it says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. So the Lord was constantly speaking in front of people. And he tells Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, 8, he says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And look what he has to tell Moses in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. He says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord had said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who, hath ma who maketh thee dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So, if the Lord made your mouth, why should you be afraid to use it? 
I remember growing up, if I knew that I had to speak in front of class, I would just skip the class. I would just go hide in the gym somewhere until that class was over. But there's really no need to be afraid. And then there's a fear of the dark. Many people are scared to death of being in the dark. But the Bible says in Daniel 2.22, it says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Uh, the Lord's not afraid of the dark because he can see in the dark. If there's animals that he made that can see in the dark, then he can obviously have night vision himself. He's, he knows what's in the dark. He knows what's under every rock. He knows what's in the bottom of the ocean. He knows what's in space. He knows what's in your closet and under your bed. There's no need to be afraid of the dark. Here's another one. Some people have nomophobia or no mobile phone. The fear of not having your phone, a psychological condition when people have a fear of being detached from mobile phone connectivity. Uh, that's a big one. A lot of people can't leave their house without their phone, and if they did, they would just have a breakdown or something. They would get all the way to Florida and then turn around and come back home, even though it's hours away, just because maybe they forgot their phone or something. But the Lord obviously doesn't have this fear. In Proverbs 15, 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Uh, God always knows what's going on. He never has to have a phone. He never has to refresh his news feed. He doesn't have to have apps to tell him what's going on. He's always connected. So, you don't have to have your phone with you. You don't have to always know what's going on. God knows what's going on for you. But there is a fear that you do need. A fear that everyone needs is in Hebrews 12, 28. And if people had this fear, it would keep them out of trouble. If people had this fear, you, you wouldn't see people running around burning down buildings. If people had this fear, you wouldn't have people voting for Joe Biden. In Hebrews 12, 28, it says, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Godly fear is what you need. You don't need a fear of the dark. You don't need a fear of heights and storms and public speaking. You need a fear of God. Just like fear of your parents kept you from disobeying them, a fear of God will keep you from disobeying Him. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 5 through 11, talks about the chastening of the Lord. What's a consequence of disobeying God if you're a child of God? A consequence is the chastening of the Lord, meaning God will whip you. If you're his child, he's going to whip you for straying away from him. Just as your earthly father whipped you when you disobeyed him, you can expect the same thing from the Lord. You get your chastening from your father, and you, but you also run to them for safety. You, you serve them with reverence and godly fear. And it's just not a respect. It's an actual fear because, you know, it's a, think about when you were young. You were afraid of your father's belt. You didn't want to get whipped because it hurt. And think about that each time you, before you sin. Think, I'm probably, God's going to whip me for this, and it'll keep you from doing it. And think about this, God has your breath and heartbeat in his hands. In Job 12, 9 and 10, it says, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Every day you need to realize that when you hear your heartbeat or you feel your heart beating, all it would take for you to die is your heart just not to beat again. And God has your heart in his hand. When you're breathing, all it would take is for that to be your last breath. And you're going to be in heaven, 
or you're going to be in hell. When you're driving down the road, all it would take is for a transfer truck to just come over in your lane a little bit, and then you're going to be uh, in millions of pieces. You know, God has his breath, your breath and your life in his hands. And Hebrews 10.31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you're a lost man, if you're not saved, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God because Hebrews 12, 29 says, For our God is a consuming fire. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. What's the point of life is fear God and keep his commandments. If you fear him, then you'll do what he says. You'll keep those commandments. What he says is not bad. Um, the Bible says don't commit adultery. Do you want somebody to commit adultery on you? The Bible says don't lie. You want people lying to you? The Bible says don't cheat. You want people to cheat? Uh, the Bible says don't steal. You want people stealing your things? It says don't kill. Thou shalt not kill. You want somebody to run up in your house at night and shoot you? God wants you to talk to him. Why don't you talk to him? Don't you want to talk to the God who made the worlds? The God who has seen everything that's went on all throughout time? So do what he says. Fear God and keep his commandments. Just like Noah. Noah was a preacher of righteousness because he feared God. In Hebrews eleven seven, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. See, Noah was moved with fear to build the ark. Moses feared God. He says in Deuteronomy 6.24, And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. Notice all these good things that come from fearing God. It says, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Paul says in Ephesians 5.21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Peter, in 1 Peter 2.17, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. The apostle John in Revelation 14.6-7 says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. So there you have Paul, you have Peter, you have the apostle John telling you to fear God. You have that angel in the Tribulation time period telling you to fear God. Moses and Noah telling you to fear God. In Proverbs, Proverbs is written by Solomon. It says in Proverbs 16, 6, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. That's why you got so much evil going on. Men lost the fear of God. The Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People have no love except for themselves, and they don't fear God. They don't fear anything. You should have a healthy fear of God and authority, the authority that God has set up. And I know a lot of people might not agree with this, but God is, is for a, a good government and the police. And, you know, the government is, is crooked, and there are crooked cops. But God put in place rulers, according to the Bible. In Romans 13, 3, it says, For rulers are not a terror to good works. 
So rulers don't make more bad things happen if they're, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. It says, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. You know, if uh, a government's doing what it's supposed to do, then they're a terror to evil works. They're going to be a deterrent to crime. It says, Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. If you do that which is good, then you're not going to have to worry about the police. Uh, when I drive to work, I'm not drinking, and I'm trying to uh, keep the speed limit, so I don't have to be afraid of the police. I mean, but that's the thing, though. I have a fear, a reverence and fear for the police that, you know, if I see some a, a cop on the side of the road, you know, and I, I look down at my at how fast I'm going, and I pump my brakes a little bit, you know, you, you want to have that fear. If you do that, you're not going to get pulled over. You know how that you can uh, lower your chances of getting pulled over? Abide by the law. And I'm, I'm fully aware that there are crooked cops. And I'm fully aware that there are race, some racist cops. But as a whole, most cops are just trying to do their job. You know, if you've been drinking and you get pulled over... I'm glad you got pulled over because if you've been drinking and you get pulled over or you're high or something, you don't care about anybody's life but yourself. You put everybody's life in danger on the road. You put the cop's life in danger on the road when you're drinking and driving or if you're doing something stupid or driving recklessly. You know, if you do what you're supposed to do, rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. It says, For he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. If you're doing wrong things, if you're out burning down buildings and stabbing people and shooting them, you should be afraid. Be afraid of, of the authority that God has put there. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is a minister of God, a revenger of to execute wrath on him that doeth evil. God is for capital punishment. God put capital punishment in place because it's a deterrent to crime. And the person doing that is the minister of God. The minister of God to thee for good. I'm glad that we got capital punishment. I'm glad, and I, I mean, I think that people, if people were, as soon as, they found out you murdered somebody. I think you should be put to death. And I think that would be a deterrent to crime. And I'm glad when I see the police. That shows that, you know, we have, we're going to have a more safe neighborhood. But, moving on, if the Lord is on your side, if you're on the Lord's side and the Lord's on your side, you're going to have a sense of fearlessness that the Bible characters had. It says in Deuteronomy 31, 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So the Lord's not like someone that when trouble comes, you look back and then he just left. He's always there with you. It says in Joshua 10, 25, And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of a good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And Paul says, If God be for us, who can be against us? It, no enemy can be too strong if you got the Lord with you. It says in Leviticus 26, 6, or Leviticus 26, 8, And five of you shall chase an hundred. And an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. So if the Lord is on your side, it's like having an infinite number of people. That's why five of you can chase a thousand. A hundred can put ten thousand to flight, because you got the Lord on your side, it's like an infinite number of people. Uh, I, I love that picture that says, the whole world is against me. It wouldn't be fair otherwise. Because you got the Lord on your side. And it's still not fair. 
because the whole world coming against you can't go against God. But people can be encouraged by your fearlessness if they see you. In Philippians 1.14, it says, Many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. When the people saw Paul go to prison and just continue preaching, it made them more bold to speak the word without fear. Proverbs 3.25, Be not afraid of sudden fear. I really like that verse. Sometimes fear hits you suddenly. But remember, all the things in this world can do is kill the body. It can't kill the soul. And if you're saved, then to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. As soon as your soul leaves this body, it's going to be present with the Lord. All this world can do is kill your body. Proverbs 3.26, For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So you can let your feet hang out from under the covers at night. You can wiggle your toes around at night and don't have to worry about a monster going to grab your feet because the Lord will keep your foot from being taken. And you have those great prom that great promise in Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You have that great promise. So, the fear you should have is godly fear. And if you fear God, and you're a born-again believer, you're going to have a sense of fearlessness. But here's some fear you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have fear from the flesh, men, and the devil. Most people are afraid of what men can do to them. They are afraid of not doing what the flesh wants. They're afraid of what the devil is going to do to them if they live like a Christian. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five: The fear of man bringeth a snare, but who put, whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't fear them which kill the body, but can't do nothing to your soul. You'd be better off to fear God. Revelation 2, 10, This is in the tribulation. It's referring to a tribulation. The Lord says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He says not to be afraid of the things in the tribulation. Well, what's in the tribulation? According to Matthew 24, starting in verse 5, it says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, and diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And many shall, and then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many. False prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But the Lord says, fear none of these things. All these scary things that happen in the tribulation. Locusts coming up out of the bottomless pit. Mark of the beast. Earthquakes. Fear none of those things. Don't fear it. Because all it can do is kill the body. If you're a born again believer which we are today, the Lord has your soul. If you're a saint in the tribulation, the Lord's going to be with you. But luckily, we don't have to go through the tribulation, thankfully, because we're delivered from the wrath to come. But he tells those, he's going to tell those saints in the tribulation, fear none of, the, fear none of these things, which thou shalt suffer. But some people don't fear God. And you know who they're acting like when they don't fear God? They're acting just like the devil. Because if you believe Leviathan, as I believe, is the devil in Job 41, it says, Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He's made without fear. 
Why does the devil do what he does? Because he does not fear God. People used to wear these t-shirts that said, no fear. And I guess they thought they were tough or something, but you know who they're acting like? The devil. There is a good kind of fear. You need to fear God. Do you fear God? Now, if you, when you say no fear, does that mean you don't fear anything on this world because you got God on your side? Then you know, I agree with that, but people are using that to say they're, they're fearless on their own strength. But Romans 3.18 says, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Talking about the wicked men. Talking about the wicked men not being afraid of God. In Jude, in Jude verse 12, it says, Feeding themselves without fear. A lot of people are getting rich because they have no morals and because they don't fear God. And they're feeding their face without fear. There are people getting rich off human trafficking. And if you're such a piece of filth and slime that you would take a child from its mother's arms and put it in human trafficking for money, you are a sick, twisted pervert and you need to be shot. You're sick. Uh, you're feeding yourself without fear. You obviously have zero fear of God. If you would take a child who its mother's going to mourn for and sell it, to other perverted, uh, twisted people to have sex with, you you have no fear. Uh, like these uh, artists today, Lady Gaga, for example. Uh, with uh, if you look at, I believe it's a cover of her one of her CDs or some picture she's in. I'm not really sure what it is, but she's sitting with children, and the children have blood in a cup, and she has blood around her mouth. Showing an abuse, some form of abuse of children there. Possibly the adrenochrome stuff. It's just sick stuff. She's a sick witch. And if she doesn't get saved, she's going to go to a hot, hot part of hell, I'm telling you. She is a sick, devil-possessed hoe, is all she is. Um, Cardi B is getting rich off of one of the most filthy songs I believe is in existence. The WAP song. I, I can't even say what that stands for because it's so filthy. And the other day, I'm just driving down the road with my family. I come to a red light, and there's some sick perverts in the, in the car next to us that's listening to that song, and they like the song and are listening to it to where my kids can hear it. <laughs> I really appreciate that. But it, it's just got some fil extremely filthy lyrics in it. Those women in that song are modern day Jezebel hoes. I mean, all this music is, is teaching your daughter to be a, a little hoe. I would make sure that your daughter's not listening to this filthy nonsense because these people, they're feeding themselves without fear. They are entertaining your kids, even though this is going to warp your kids because it's getting them more and more money. Your kids are getting them rich. And there's a lot of stupid adults getting them rich too who also buy the music. And many Christians today listen to this, these songs because many Christians today, they say they're Christians, but they act like atheists because they don't even seem like they believe God's even here. It says they profess that they, in Titus 1.16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. In some verses in the Bible, I'm going to show you some fearless people in the Bible. And when I look at these verses and I hear about these people, I feel like a sissy compared to these people. But, for example, David in 1 Samuel 17, 37, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. So uh, David knew that the Lord delivered him from the paw of the lion and the bear and that he's going to deliver him from the giant. David was fearless because he had God on his side. Then one of David's mighty men in 2 Samuel 23, 20, it says, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzal, who 
who had done many acts. He slew two lion like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in time of snow. He's fearless. He went after two lion like men and then fought a lion in a time of snow to top it all. In Numbers 14, 6 through 10, you have Caleb and Joshua who are not afraid to go into a land of giants and fight them because the Lord is with us, they say. In Numbers 14, 9, it says, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, which would be giants, for they are bread for us. He's saying we're going to eat these people up. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. He says, "Fear, don't even be afraid of these giants, because the Lord's with us. Caleb and Joshua probably the most fearless people in the Bible. Joshua is probably the most fearless person. In Joshua 1, 5 through 6, it says, There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. That's what the Lord told Joshua. Joshua was already fearless, and then the Lord tells him that on top of it. So he, I, I imagine he was just going after anybody and everybody. And then in Judges 15, 15 through 16, Samson kills a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. If, if there's a thousand men coming at you, most people are just going to run. Samson took a jawbone of an ass and he, he smote him. And then uh, Samson caught 300 foxes, tied their tails together and set them on fire. You know, all these crazy stories that make us men today look like sissies. All these fearless men in the Bible. And that's who you want to be like. That's who you want your role models to be. These is the Lord Jesus Christ and these Bible characters who were fearless. And if, the more you read the Bible, the more you pray, the more you realize that this life is not all there is. The more you realize to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord the more you realize that this world does not satisfy and that men can only kill the body, the more fearless and bold you're going to be for the Lord Jesus Christ. You just have to stay constantly in that state of mind because you'll go back and forth with it. With it. You, one day you're going to be fearless and bold because you get filled with the Spirit. Then the next day something happens and you lose that fearlessness and that boldness that you need to have. So you need to be constantly reading the Bible, constantly praying and in fellowship with the Lord. But this has just been a quick study on the subject of fear in the Bible.